My name is Chris Fry. I'm an instructor in sports medicine rehabilitation here at Cornell and a resident in nutrition and undergoing a master's program. So Parsec came from Iran and had a history of trauma at one point and we didn't know much about what was going on other than we had some dysfunction in the back legs. When Parsec arrived it was clear he'd undergone some type of major trauma to the thorax and the chest and the spine associated with that and possibly the neck. There was major deformation of that area and very little use of the back legs, almost absolutely no use of the back legs. Luckily there was still sensation in the back legs and some ability to move them under Parsa's own volition, but very little. My major concern was that this trauma had seriously compromised the spine and the spinal cord with that, and Parsa might be always handicapped, not be able to use the back legs. Parsa had been like this for a long time, and the longer they're like that, the less likely they are to regain function. Unfortunately, there's really no standard in veterinary medicine. Rehabilitation for neurological spinal issues is relatively new. We take a lot of what we apply here from the human world and we look at what we call activity-based restorative therapies. And so we use those reflexes that are present, we motivate voluntary motor, and we help support the patient in these endeavors because they're so weak. With some repetition, we can encourage things like muscle strengthening, we can encourage better gait patterning, and spatial awareness and balance. And so those are the focuses that we use for PARSA. When we begin with a patient of very little motor, sometimes the best thing to do is get them into what we have, an underwater treadmill. And the water allows buoyancy, so these patients don't have to bear their full weight on their weak muscles. And the treadmill, I can control the speed. And so I can set it at a speed where I think might elicit voluntary motor function in the back legs at a level that they can keep up with the front legs. And we call that gait patterning. And the more you do it over and over again, especially in dogs, it works on what we call central pattern generators in the spinal cord, which allow for a nice even one, two, one, two gait patterning. And so we do this over and over again in hopes to re-educate the neuromuscular system in PARSA. At home, we practice supported weight bearing to help strengthen those legs. We practice supported walking, and we got PARSA a cart. And a cart does relieve all weight bearing in the back legs, but it can encourage use of motor function at home where we don't have the water to support PARSA. He has a pretty severe degree of scoliosis, so getting a cart that fit him was also quite the challenge, actually. But he eventually took to it and started to really do well at home with that, and so we were able to wean him off water therapy with a treadmill, and Willow was able to take Parse at home with a cart and get him on a treadmill and use that same timing technique for gait patterning. He was in here and he looked so much better. He's able to get up on his own, He's able to turn circles in both directions, and his strength is much improved. He was able to stand for just minutes on end without any cart support or anything. And so from a functional standpoint, he's a functional house pet now. I'm very happy with his progress. He might have to come in occasionally. All of these pets require constant maintenance of their rehabilitation in order to maintain that muscle mass and maintain that neuromuscular function. The world of physical therapy is really challenging, especially for neurological patients, but really everything. And if you've gone to a physical therapist yourself, there's always home exercises to practice. If you're not doing the home exercises, you won't see dramatic improvement. You might see some, but not dramatic. And in Parse's case, with the severity of disease, if Willow wasn't following through with the home exercise protocol, we would not have made the progress we see. Uh, absolutely not. And so it's, it's really important. Unfortunately for a dog like Parsa, he required very intense home physical therapy. Multiple times a day, getting him out, trying to walk him. We used sensation-based therapy, massaging those legs, maintaining range of motion in these joints that weren't being very used well, and trying to strengthen the limbs several times a day. And all of this is very important, especially in the neurological patient. My favorite part of my job is watching dogs like Parsa get better and improving the quality of life of these animals. That's just the best.